Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Amatsumi. The time has finally arrived. We are officially in the home stretch, the final bit of the game here, the final story, Hotoru's story, which coincidentally is also going to be, I, I guess, connecting back to the main plot, maybe? I'm not really sure, but regardless, I've been looking forward to this. I think a lot of us have been looking forward to this. This is the main heroine of the game that we're finally getting to get our or get the story for. And I'm just, I'm really excited because the last story that we went through with Mana, no offense, but kind of offense, wasn't that fantastic of a story. It was interesting to start and then kind of slogged in the middle, got a little more interesting towards the end, and then the route kind of slogged again. So I'm ready for this. I'm really excited, and I hope you guys are as well. Huh. I love Mondays. I most definitely do not. Where the hell is my mouse pointer? There it is. It's the break after third period. I stretch trying to relax my stiff body. As usual, I'm barely understanding anything in these classes, but it's fun to study all this incomprehensible stuff. And most importantly, I like how peaceful it is here. Should I not be? I look at him oddly. His eyes widen. I guess. I missed a lot of school because of the whole thing with Mana, so I hadn't realized. The teachers have been talking about what will be on the final, and during the breaks, I've been seeing other students poring over textbooks. But, well, it's just a test. Uh, well, thanks for your concern, but I think I'll be fine. I'll figure something out. A quick kododama or two should do the trick when the time comes. I mean, there's no way I can actually take my finals normally and do well on them anyway. Mana must be in the same boat. I think of asking what her plans are, but she seems to be busy, surrounded by female classmates. Alright, I'm glad she seems to be getting along with them, huh? I hear a voice from somewhere. Koichi seems to hear the voice too. Haha, <laughs> I, I already know who it is, we all know who it is. We don't even have to guess, there's no hesitation in assuming who it is. I start to cut my ears to hear better, but there's no need as Hotoru bursts into the room. <sighs> her gaze darts around the classroom. I raise my hand and wave it to get her attention. Uh, Hotoru, could you please not cause a ruckus? Ah, Such a ruckus. Leaving several startled students in her wake, she walks up to us. Yeah. Yeah. Koichi and Hotoru glance at each other. You guys are pretty forward. I don't think I greet someone I didn't know very well as easily as the two of them just did. So, what did you need? Kinda sus, but okay. Huh? That was really it. Alright, <laughs> whatever I guess. She grins at me, and then turns around and actually leaves the classroom. Amazingly enough. No clue. <laughs> Kyoko comes over to us, having noticed Hotoru's visit, much like everyone in the class surely had. Yeah, she's just as crazy as ever. Worried? Ah. Hotoru already knows what was actually happening last week, but maybe she was still concerned anyway. I guess I made everyone worry about me more than I realized. I guess it's... <coughs> excuse me, goddamn. I guess it's something else to consider. 
yeah, Makoto was quite literally out for a few days because he couldn't perceive shit. And uh, that, I guess that was what was going around. That was the, the lie that Kokodo had to tell. And, uh, well, after all that uh, bullshit, let's call it that, uh, Makoto, after solving the problem at hand, was asleep for like three days. You're talking about finals too, Kyoko. <laughs> oh, I see. Summer vacation. I've heard the phrase many times. I remember talking to Kokodo about it soon after I arrived here too. It'll feel a bit lonely with school out for the summer. But at the same time, I'm also looking forward to it. The old me would have hated the thought of not going to school. I guess it shows how much I've adapted to life here. Thanks for your offer too, Kyoko, but I'll be fine. Kyochi grins. すみません。そこまで卑屈にならなくてもいいだろう。俺より朝日奈の方が勉強を教えるのに向いてるみたいだし。私がですか？あ、前に朝日奈は勉強の教え方がうまいって話してただろ。We said that, huh? I did say that back when I was trying to help Kyoko make friends, but I don't think I ever said it to Kuichi directly. I guess he must have been paying more attention to Kyoko than I realized even back then. Well, there's no need to point out his eavesdropping now. And it's coming a little late, but he's really trying to be a good friend to her these days. You're a fine man, Kuichi. Huh? I smile at him, but he frowns. Plus, you have a girlfriend, I know. Yeah, I don't either. He was making a joke about us being gay. He rubs his forehead exasperated. That was a pretty forced way of changing the subject. You know, this is out of the blue, but I was just thinking about it. He makes for a really good best friend character. Maybe because he's not exactly... I mean, he, he plays the role of the best friend character, but... He's not like the the shoehorn comedic relief type of guy. Like he's actually served quite a bit of purpose, but not over the top. He's just there. And he's really good on the supporting cast side. <laughs> it really isn't actually. Why did you ask her what her best subject was, Koichi? Koichi, you really are a very fine man. Kyoko giggles to herself. Ha! <laughs> Chatting like this is so fun. By the way, I'm garbage at everything except PE. I see. Well, it is pretty obvious after all. Finals, study groups, summer vacation. There are so many more fun things to look forward to. I love school. I'm happy just to be able to do things together with everyone. Ah, just wait until you're like past the school life, you know? And then it's just dull and boring and you have to work. There's no hanging out with your friends like every day anymore and working on the same thing. Now it's lunchtime. Onita. Just as I'm about to sit down to have my lunch with Koichi, Mana comes over to us. What's up? Do you want to join us, Mana? Uh-huh. Eh? What the fuck? Koichi opens his lunchbox and starts picking out the rice one grain at a time with a broad smile on his face. Oh! Sorry, Kuichi, I'll fix you up soon. That was kind of fucked up, actually. That, that's like the old mana right there. I don't get a choice, do I? Huh, I guess I wouldn't. 
My dear little sister is inviting me to lunch. Why would I decline? So, should we eat at our desks? That's fair. She looks around the busy classroom, sighing deeply, or sighing deeply, excuse me. I think her thirst for fresh air is even greater than her hunger for food. Let's go then. I stand up and clap Kuchi on the shoulder. You don't have to count rice grains, just eat your lunch normally. Yeah, hopefully that worked. As we step out into the courtyard, Mana turns around and looks up at the school building. Did you really want him to be sitting there counting rice grains for the whole lunch break? Okay, but I don't think... I don't think that's fair, and I don't think he wanted to do that. Well, actually, I'm pretty curious about that too. It wouldn't have killed Kuichi to skip lunch for one day anyway. What? Wait a minute. Yeah. We synced up perfectly there, but I won't mention that. But anyway, what made you want to leave the classroom so badly? Did something happen? I mean, now that you've been coming to school for several weeks, I thought you'd gotten used to being in there. Maybe it's nothing but I press her just in case. She almost died a few days ago, after all, so maybe she still has some lingering health issues. After a moment, she smiles, unusually for her. Silly. You chatting. Now that is surprising. Hmm? So whether we're in her route or not, she is going to better him or better herself and kind of adapt to modern society, which is good. Absolutely, the village is really behind the times. She mumbles shyly. What a cutie. What look? Well, I definitely am smiling. I smile even more broadly. Remember when Makoto could not do that at all back then? Now that's development, straight up. I'm not trying to tease you. I'm just happy that you've started to love the outside world like I do. Don't worry about it. Anyway, speaking of being a normal student, what are you going to do about finals? I ask her the question I had wanted to ask earlier. And that's what I thought. Okay, I'll do us both together. I'm thinking I'll tell the teachers to give us both the class's average grade, no matter what we write on the test. She seems much less interested in tests than in, than in chatting with her friends, excuse me. But eventually, we'll both have to start taking tests properly. She's far from enthusiastic, but I'm still happy to hear her say that. At first, she had complained that she didn't need any book learning from the outside world, but now she's saying, eventually. She's thinking about the future just like me. Oh, nothing. I shake my head, but can't, sh can't shake the smile off my face. Alright, let's tuck in. Tuck in? What the fuck does that mean? You mean like dive into the food? Our lunches? Or leave? I don't, I don't know, I've never heard that phrase. After a few more hours of fun, school ended for the day. As soon as I got home, I started my work at the cafe. Now it's long past lunchtime though, so there isn't much to do. Someone orders a coffee once in a while, but that's about it. So Azuki-san went to do some laundry, leaving the whole place in my care. Can't the sun go down any faster? Once it's evening, more people will start showing up wanting dinner. I hear someone coming down the stairs. <sighs> Kokoro lets out a weird sounding sigh. What's wrong? <laughs> oh. When we got home from school, Kokoro had gone straight to her room. Now I know what she's been doing there all this time. Didn't any of your friends invite you to a study group? 
いきなり苦手な英語があるから一人でちゃんと勉強しようと思って Oh, bad idea. Always do that shit with, with friends. A, a group of people, even if you don't know them, just straight up. Your friends can't help you with your English? <laughs> okay, don't do it with your friends. I see. I kind of guess that's how study groups would be. Like, I've, you know, back in computer science, it's a little different for studying. You're actually just working on the programming that you've been assigned. And also looking over algorithms and this and that. Basically, coding up your own shit. You don't want to share too much of what you wrote, but you want to be able to give ideas. And I'm kind of straying off topic. I have gone to study groups with people that I've never really met before. Like, I've seen them in class, but I would not really call them my friends, not by any means. And I would say that's the most effective. You all have a single goal, or at least similar goals, and you're all just kind of grinding that out. I think that's more effective than sitting around with friends, to be honest. Man, everyone's asking me that recently. Also, just a, you know, fuck computer science comment that I want to throw in there. Even her explanation is the same as everyone else's. I guess it's just like the harvest season back in the village. When it comes around, nobody can talk about anything else. Anyway, if you're taking a break, do you want a drink? I can make you some apple tea. Uh, she looks pretty beat, but still as cute as ever. I put a kettle on the stove. Then I have an idea. Hey, Kokoro, you're going to go back to studying right after this, right? <laughs> she gags melodramatically. She must have gotten this penchant for theatrics from her mother. Good luck with that. And then you're going to take another break later, right? I figured. She doesn't seem to understand what exactly I'm getting at. But I just smile. Look forward to your next break. I mean, that's all it is. Honestly, uh, one of my friends, his idea or his philosophy was 30-30. 30 minutes, nonstop, get all the distractions out of the way. 30 minutes of straight focus on that shit. 30 minutes, go do something else. I feel like that is really effective. And whether that something else is playing a game, watching a show, or even doing a chore, eating, just do something else. Then, after those 30 minutes, right back to it. An hour passes. I hear wary footsteps on the staircase again, but this time they suddenly speed up, and Kokoro flies into the kitchen. Ha! <laughs> the smell of freshly baked cheesecake fills the room. Yeah, I used one of Mom's recipes. I remember that cheesecake was Kokoro's favorite, and found a recipe in that cookbook that Azuki-san had been writing earlier. I'm not allowed to put recipes from that cookbook on the cafe's menu until she signs off on it, but she said I can practice them if I like. But you have to let the cheesecakes cool for an hour before eating them, if not, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, nanda. You didn't know? I knew you'd say that, so I also have some sweet potatoes in the oven. They should be ready to eat soon. <laughs> this is my first time making them though, so don't expect too much. She looks delighted. All right, then I'll bring them up to your room with another glass of tea once they're ready. <laughs> that brings back bad memories. I think back to the day, or to that day at school, when all the girls but Kyoko were fighting over who got to feed me. I glance up at the ceiling. Uh, nothing. Mana should be wandering around somewhere outside, but... She hasn't snuck back into the house or anything, has she? <laughs> Your laugh just now sounded like Hotaru. She leans so far over the counter to peer at the cheesecake that her feet leave the ground. About me. 
たまーに兄さんのことをいろいろと聞いてくるんだよ。Once in a while, like when? 一週間に一回くらいってたまーにかな。多いのかな。She cocks her head to the side. まあ聞いてくるって言ってももうとっくに知ってるはずのことばっかりなんだよね。Hmm, it's as if it's a different person, kinda. Huh. I have no idea why Hotoru would do that either, so I just nod. She came to our classroom today, actually. She said that she wanted to see my face, and then she really left after, she, after just seeing my face. I think back over what happened today as I take out some tea leaves for Kokoro's apple tea. <laughs> Maybe she always forgets me over the weekend. <laughs> I mean, the weekend is an interesting spot because, you know, fast forward to the beginning of the game, the weekend is when those sort of things went down. You're right. It's fun too. But, so. Hmm? Ah, no. When I talk to my mother, I'm going to give her a name of a woman. I think that's a you problem. I think that's a you problem. <laughs> Kokoro, come here. <laughs> My words accidentally come out as a Kododama, but I can't help it. Once she comes over to me, I start patting her on the head. <laughs> You're too cute. <laughs> you cutie, you. <laughs> you cutie pie. You super cute cutie pie. Where the fuck is this going? <laughs> Bye! This is getting more and more fun. <laughs> Azuki san is back from doing laundry. <laughs> uh, I was just patting her on the head. <laughs> Kokodo, why did you have to say yet? As expected, Azuki san's expression changes to shock and then anger. <laughs> Hey, you know, I'm kind of down for that. Let's go. What? Well, that wasn't what I expected to be <laughs> what I expected her to be angry about. She happily walks up to me and sticks her head out to be patted. Uh, well, I don't know what to do, so I just pat her head as requested. Her hair feels just like Kokodo's. In this position, it's easy to realize how much shorter she is th than I am. It feels kind of exciting to be doing this to an older woman. <laughs> I remember how she stroked my head when I broke down at her bedside in the hospital. Yeah, it makes you feel safe, doesn't it? That is true. If a stranger started patting my head, I'd be freaked out. Kokoro blushes. Her embarrassed face is just so cute that I can't help but start patting both of their heads at the same time. What the heck kind of family activity is this? Just imagine if someone saw us doing this. And in comes Bye -bye. Mana. Yep, it's Mana. Mana starts coming in the door and then freezes in her tracks. This happens pretty often, doesn't it? Well, I guess I should be happy it was just Mana and not a customer. Uh, welcome back. What? <sighs> Me neither. I think so too. I also think maybe I should take my hands down from Kokoro and Azuki san's heads. I made cheesecake. Uh, 
Unfortunately, no. So? Wow, she instantly lost interest. Mana looks pensive. Right. So she plans to use her Kododama then. I see. Having made her decision, Mana quickly goes upstairs to leave her bag in her room before coming down and heading out the front door. Azuki-san leans out the door and calls after her as she heads off towards the shrine. Kokoro is still blushing a little as she looks at me. Yeah, we got really off topic from whatever. Oh, right. I remember now. I wanted you to try the sweet potatoes and let me know what you think. She beams. But while they finish baking, you were going to go back to studying. She sags. What a fun slice of life. Another peaceful day in the Oribe household. My life is back to normal again. Haha, <laughs> I can't wait for it to not be back to normal again. I can look back on periods of, of upheaval in my life and think about how much I enjoyed the stress and the unusuality of it all. But in the end, I think I find normal days like these to be the most pleasant of all. Honestly, same. What can I say? I like to relax once in a while. These are the kinds of idle thoughts that go through my mind on an unremarkable summer evening. But, you know, you know what they say, it's like, uh, while things are all peaceful, happy, and all that, that is when things are going to strike, when things are going to crumble the most. But... Oh. What's truly unusual sometimes lies hidden in the dark. From the blackest depths, it's been watching me, listening for my Kododama. Soon, I'll finally come face to face with this darkness. Perhaps that is my true destiny. To meet that crystallization of human's true nature, which Hotoru had warned me about. To meet the woman who I will one day, for the first time in my life, want to kill. What is this foreshadowing? What the fuck? Hey yo. Okay. That was a little sus. I know I've been using that word a lot. Term, let's go with that. But uh Yeah, I don't know how else to describe that shit. How the fuck do I? Let's be real. Two days later, it's Wednesday. As my sisters and I walk to school, our conversation turns to the final exams that are starting today. Mana is in a good mood. And in Persona games, the days just go by so quick. Kokodo groans, but I can't really sympathize. I'm with Mana on this one. Trying anything for the first time is fun. The half-day thing is kind of strange, though. So? Uh, I mean, I don't really get why we only have school for half the day during finals. I think it's to give you a break. Like, taking tests all day from morning to, like, mid-afternoon would suck major ass. Yeah, exactly. In actuality, we'll be given three tests a day from now until Friday, and then three more on Monday for a total of 12. Kokoro stares at us in disbelief. Is that how tests are? Well, then what do people do with their free time in the afternoon? Maybe there's some special way people are expected to spend their day during finals that I don't know about. The fuck is the final part of that coming from? That's funny. Cleaning and studying seem so unrelated that I can't help but laugh. 
there's a term for that. It's called procrastination. Kokoro is surprised, but I kind of know what mana means. If I pour over textbooks for too long, I really start to want to move my body. If she makes, or it makes me want to go until a field or something. So back on computer science, because that's my only fucking example of recent education. God, did I love school. And that's sarcasm. I don't know if you guys can tell. But uh, when COVID hit, uh, it was pretty much during the last half of my time in university. A kind of a little bit of an overlap. It was more like 60%. But I was working on a project with my group mates. And doing that over Discord is, oh, fun. Absolutely fun. But sitting in the same spot for hours, it does make you want to move. And also, if you're stuck, you can't figure shit out. And it's not just limited to computer science. It could be anything. You really just want to get up. And I would just go run a fucking 5K, like... No prep or anything, just leave. Just dip, like, like, hey guys, I'm gonna go take a break, and that was my break, was just running. Fantastic times. Mana points to the mountains up beyond the shrine. Kokoro and I both turned to look. Mountains without a doubt. Oh, nothing. Mana's silent glare is oppressive, but I'd feel safer not continuing this conversation. Kokoro sighs again. Are you okay? Poor thing. You don't need to worry so much, Kokoro. You've studied a lot, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Thank Oh, it's all good. Neither am I. Okay, so back to computer science. Um, I think this was my last full semester. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was my last full semester as a, uh, like, going to school on campus. And also, I lied. I think it was 60% in the other direction. I was there more than I was than having to stay home because COVID and all that. But my last full semester, I took a class that I knew was bullshit. Like, it was insanely difficult. Absolutely ridiculous. Because it was focusing a little bit more on logic. And, <laughs> yo, boy. Um... Yeah, the test was insanely ridiculous. It was difficult, but it was difficult because of how ridiculous it was. And boy, did I feel like I failed the shit out of that. But luckily, so did everybody else. So it got a really nice curve. Uh, so you, yeah, I, I'm not the smartest branch in the tree here, but you know, you just gotta keep on grinding. Do the best you can and you'll surprise yourself. Hey, Kokoro looks ready to dive into Mana's arms, but Mana shrinks back a little frightened. That was nice of you. I smile at Mana and she reddens. Anyway, Kokoro, from what you were saying, I guess you're not an A student? I probably should have known that by now, but Mana and I are so bad at every subject that it's hard to tell how good anyone else is by comparison. Oh, but I have. Calculus 3. Holy shit. Yeah. I can believe that. Mana has noticed it too. I don't know what her grades are like, but as far as I can tell, the sharpness of her mind is top class. Huh? 
Huh? Really? なんだおバカだったのねあいやそうじゃなくてホタルンあの頃から妙に上の空で Gee, I wonder why. やる気が起きなかったとかだと思うよ。Boy, oh boy, do I wonder why. She wasn't motivated. That's pretty impressive in, a, in of itself. Everyone else seems to get hyper focused when tests roll around, and even good students like Kyoko. Well, tell her that if something's troubling her, I'd like to help too. Maybe there's something going on in her life that's making her so out of it. Oh, oh. Ara? I don't think I said anything unusual, so I'm surprised at their reactions. What's up with you two? Something like what? Is that so odd? I'd like to think I'm always looking out for people who need help. You two are totally in sync with each other when it comes to stuff like this. What the fuck? Get out of here with that shit. Come on. That was unprecedented. Kokodo and Mana clasp hands. That's bullshit. I've rarely seen Mana this bubbly. Wait. She's just playing out something she saw in a manga, right? Her facial expression looks the same as ever. This isn't worth rolling my eyes at. Anyway, now I see. What the two of them are saying might be right. I do often pick up on things people say and realize that there's something I can help them with. But I don't usually go out of my way to look for problems that a specific person might have. I guess I just have to, or I just want to see Hotoru again. I didn't quite realize how much I wanted that. Stop it, you two. Well, I've already slept with both of my sisters, quote unquote, big ass quotes, please God. So I can hardly blame them for getting that impression. But maybe that's the point. There must be a reason why I didn't choose either of them. No, why I specifically chose not to choose either of them. It's because there's, there's a fourth wall that you can't see, and I'm on the other side of it, making the decisions for you. We keep chatting as we head up the road to school. That's some Totono shit. I do want to see Hotodu as well, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest here. She is best girl, but also... I am highly suspicious of whatever the fuck is happening in the hospital. The closer we come, the more people there are around to overhear, or around us to overhear, so our conversation settles down into safer topics. Which is always good. When we reach the front gate, Kokodo leaves us to go to her classroom, and Mana and I proceed to ours. I say hello to my acquaintances in the class and then sit down and survey the room. Today almost everyone is sitting at their desk, staring at textbooks or notebooks, instead of chatting with each other like usual. <laughs> Mana murmurs a similar observation to mine. Apparently the results of this test will have a big effect on the students' future lives. It's kind of like crop, er, crop yields at harvest time. <laughs> Guys ever play Rune Factory? She seems to understand the gravity of the situation. Well, I've already spoken a kododama to the teachers, so all we have to do is sit tight and not make a ruckus. She grins at me and then sits down at her desk. Really? I guess she's already forgotten about everything she did last week. Oh. Kuichi arrives and comes by to say hello. Good morning, Kuichi. Wow, you look half asleep. Huh? Why were you cooking in the middle of the night? And right before finals, too. Huh, I'm guessing from his reaction that I misunderstood something. But I can't imagine what. Yeah, don't worry about it. Jealous? Slightly? You could say I've sort of given up a long time ago. Yeah, they were very understanding. Of my Kododama, that is. You guys ever have the opportunity to, like, have an index card? Like, both sides, maybe? Or just one side? Or, or regardless, 
some sort of paper to accompany you on an, a test. You don't know specifically what types of questions or whatever will be there, but you can write down some terms or connect some dots of some sorts. I think it was Calculus 1 and 2 back in uh, college. I had the opportunity, thanks to my lovely professor, to have an index card, we all did, both sides, and oh my god, I wrote so fucking small. I included a shit ton of equations, so many. And I wrote teeny tiny little bits of pieces to remind myself what these were used for, how to even use some of them, because derivatives? I don't remember that shit at all right now. He goes to his desk, sits down, and takes out his textbook and notes. I guess I should probably try not to bother my classmates too much today. May everyone do well on the test. I pray out loud, not as a kododama, but just as a normal wish. Mana and I are totally useless when it comes to academics, but I hope some other more studious god hears my prayer. Ah, finals week. Gotta put those knowledge stats to the test. And then, the test begins. The classroom feels totally different from usual. It's very quiet. The teacher doesn't say a word either. Only the sound of pencils scritching on paper rolls through the air. And it's not just our class. The whole school is filled with this strange silence. I like it. Quiet, yet tense. Still, yet filled with activity. It's a pleasant feeling. <laughs> Mana must be feeling the same way as she lets out an impressed murmur. For some time, I sit quietly in my seat and wait for time to pass. I try to flip through the test questions, but as I expected, they are far beyond my abilities. Then... Mana speaks a Kododama. You just couldn't wait, could you? As she stands up, I sigh and roll my eyes, but she suddenly shrugs dismissively. Well, honestly, so am I. I can feel the novelty of test taking wearing off already. There's no way I'll make it until lunchtime, just sitting here doing nothing. Well, you probably shouldn't, but there's not much point in you staying here either. Sure. Mountain climbing? She packs up her things eagerly and leaves the room. Alright. There's still half an hour before even the first test of the day is over. I could just take a nap, but I decide to open my completely blank test booklet again. I should at least try to answer the questions, regardless of how well I'll do. This will be good practice. Let's see. I lick my lips and pick up a pe or pick up my pencil. I mean, if it's multiple choice, well, the ones you really don't know, pick one letter and stick with that going down. And pretty soon, I'm destroyed in spectacular fashion. Uh. I groan, collapsed face down on my desk. Absolute failure. Utter defeat. A rout on all fronts. This is one for the history books. Not that I know the first thing about history books, as has become painfully clear. My head feels hot, as if my brain were overheating. Oh, it's fun. Tests are hard. <sighs> Apparently that was all he wanted to say, because he quickly returns to his seat and starts preparing for test number two. I can't believe there are still two tests left before school gets out. And today's just the first day. We still have tomorrow, Friday, and Monday left. Am I in hell? I'm amazed that all the other students are taking this so calmly, like it's normal or something. I honestly respect them from the bottom of my heart. Human beings are incredible. <sighs> my mind is clearly racing out of control. I need to stop thinking, I need to act. It's time for me to make a decision once more. I summon the same fierce determination I felt when I swore to myself I'd save Azuki-san, Kyoko, and Mana. And... I hereby pronounce myself extremely out of here. Sorry, Mana, I shouldn't have rolled my eyes when you hightailed it for the mountains. Wow, we're just leaving, alright. 
Cool. The next test has started, but I've quickly extricated myself from the classroom using my Kododama. I've never wandered around the school grounds while class was in session before. It's a strange feeling. Yeah, we have. There are more people at school right now than I could count, and yet it's terribly silent. It's like I'm in another world all by myself. As I walk down the corridor, I peek into each classroom and see all the students bent over their desks, serious expressions on their faces, putting pencil to paper. Oh, excuse me. Every classroom looks so similar that I almost feel like I'm walking in circles. Of course, that's just an illusion. Nobody stops me as I make my way down to the first floor. I probably look like I'm just heading to the bathroom. I suppose I could just go home, but... I want to enjoy this mysterious atmosphere a little longer. That's understandable. I dig it. Maybe I'll go out to the courtyard and... What are you doing? Oh? Huh? Suddenly I hear a voice behind me. Hotoru. No, I mean, I already know your name. I just said it. In fact, what? She grins. It was literally seconds ago, though. She's as confusing as ever, and as silent on her feet as ever, for that matter. I didn't hear her approach at all. Wait a second. Why are you out here? Aren't you in the middle of a test? I'm surprised all over again as I realize that she shouldn't be here in the first place. Huh. I mean, what? Aren't tests really important? So then why are you here, Hotoru? I don't understand, neither do I. I'm, I'm really, like, out of it here. I may not know much about how things work, but even I can tell that it's weird for anyone other than Mana or me to be skipping their finals. She seems to have figured out why I'm here. Uh, remind me, did I promise to use my Kododama to get you a passing grade on your finals or something like that? Maybe she asked me to help her out and I forgot. Or maybe she texted me and I didn't see it. But Hotoru shakes her head. But why? She pauses to think for a moment and then continues. But why betray it? The life you were supposed to lead? Who says you have to lead it the way that you were told to lead it? What? Yeah, even I'm confusing myself to be fucking honest. No. Her words really strike home. Thanks to that, I finally regained my composure. I understand, I understand all too well. Like how I left my village in the middle of the night. Hotoru chuckles to herself. Something about her seems off today, even more than usual. But maybe that's fine. All the better for making today a special occasion to remember. Well, considering when and where we've just run into each other, I guess neither of us has any right to criticize the other. She sticks out her hand. Count me the fuck in. It's a tempting proposition. There's something strangely alluring about the slender fingertips of her outstretched hand. It's still second period, and I left my bag in the classroom. But thanks to Mana's Kododama, nobody will know that I'm gone, and my bag is empty today anyway. So I decide to take her hand in mine. Oh boy, oh boy. 
Oh boy, oh boy. There's there's a lot to there's a lot to really consider here. There really fucking is. And it's kind of confusing because I know something's wrong. I think everybody's on the same page that something is very, very wrong with uh, our interpretation of Hotaru and whatever it is in the hospital and whether Hotaru is a puppet or even alive or who Hotaru really is. There's a lot of unknowns here and it's really confusing and it's making me worried it's making me very distrustful of this character, which is sad because I really like this character. It's the main heroine, and I'm, like, totally on board with her, so it kind of fucking sucks. I'm very conflicted. But something's going on for sure, and Hotaru, the at least the person that we've known, has her reasons. And we got a hint that I was reminded of in the last episode. It isn't despair that pushes people, it's love, right? Something's going on here. And it's got something to do with love. Which, by the way, when you think about it, love has kind of been a pushing factor for all of our subplots so far in this whole deal. But that aside, what is this character's goal? The person that we've been talking to, not the other personality, but would also like to know that other personality's goal as well. Whatever it is, we will soon find out, I'm sure. Thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all of that fancy shit, and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.